This morning on This Week, A Better Way? Iowa has started its redistricting process as Illinois now faces lawsuits over it. Does Iowa have a better way of doing things? And country connection. We don't even have cell reception. Too many people in rural areas are second class citizens because they can't connect to the internet. What's being done about it? And skipping a beat. I thought maybe that I was just getting older. Slowing down the heart to give you a fighting chance to live. It's your health this week. From WQAD News 8, this is News 8 This Week with Jim Mertens. And every 10 years, one of the biggest political battles you'll ever see occurs. And it's all because we just counted how many people are in America. The census is in the Constitution, but what happens next takes on a life of its own in 50 different states, including Iowa. In each state, new district lines are drawn so that each county board, each state legislative, and each congressional district all has an equal number of people living in it, as all the rest. But reapportionment is a political blood sport because the decisions made last a decade. It's our top story this morning on News 8 This Week. It's never pretty. This is a blatant effort to kill democracy in Illinois, and it will not go unanswered. In Illinois, Republicans and other groups are taking state Democrats to court over redistricting, the every 10-year battle over legislative lines. But Illinois is not the only battleground state. The number one thing I'm hearing is be fair. Be fair, be fair, be fair, over and over and over again. In Michigan, the state Supreme Court rejected a delay of its November deadline. In Wisconsin, Governor Tony Evers vetoed a Republican plan to delay redrawing districts until 2023. In Minnesota, Democrats sued, calling on the Supreme Court to draw the lines after lawmakers just simply couldn't agree. People want change, number one. Change meaning they want things to be different. They don't like that two sides of the aisle have had this contentious um, relationship. And then there's Iowa. Iowa conducts redistricting unlike any other state. Nonpartisan legislative staff members create maps for the Iowa House and Senate, as well as the U.S. House districts. The legislature does vote on those plans, though. And 10 years ago, Iowa had to go from five congressional districts to four, redrawing the lines in the Quad Cities and elsewhere. I think it's beneficial in that you usually have competitive districts. And if you look around the rest of the country, there are very few competitive congressional districts in the United States. In state after state, then, one of the biggest problems with redistricting this year is that the U.S. Census was delayed and the results are not expected until next month. That's pushing the state mandated deadline in Iowa that was September to get the work done. And at the same time, public hearings are to be held to get statewide input, and that's the task of the Temporary Redistricting Advisory Commission. And the newest member of that commission is Davenport Attorney Jasmine Newton, who is also the LULAC Council 10 president. Thank you so much. Tell me what work you have ahead of you. It is our, our duty to uh, establish a report um, that we will bring to the General, General Assembly regarding the public's comments. We have to have at least three public hearings um, that's required by the code uh, regarding the redistricting process. This is so much different, as you know, than other states. It's really pretty much taken out of the hands of the politicians until the very end. I mean, I mean, you're a student of government and a student of Iowa government as well. Do you like this system? I, I do think it's a good system. Um, I think that what shows that it's, it's worked, so since the enactment at enactment of the nonpartisan approach in 1980, we have not needed any court intervention in Iowa. And that's certainly different than what we see in other states, including our neighbor across the, the river. So in that way, I, I would assume you, you like the system, but here's the thing is that critics say this should be a political issue. This should be something that uh, there's a, a little fight between the parties in order to draw the lines. Well, I do not believe that politicians at the Capitol should be able to pick their voters. Um, I do think that the way this process was set up in the state of Iowa was meant to be a fair process. And let's talk about that for a moment, because you said in some states, and it's, and it's very true, is that politicians get involved and they get to pick the voters, as you say, which would be either a Democrat or Republican. But also, in a lot of these systems that we see in other states, it's really protecting incumbents as well. And that is correct, um, but we don't see that in Iowa. So Iowa Code 
uh, section 42.4 sets out the state the standards for the redistricting uh, and the process needs to be fair and we want to end up with maps that are compact contiguous and preserve political subdivisions what we can't have and that's prohibited by the code is maps that are meant to favor an incumbent or a political party well and you do see in so many states what has always been called gerrymandering which is is you know almost ageless in the united states where you have these weird weird weirdly drawn lines that's another thing that Iowa do, does. As far as the congressional districts are concerned, it seems to follow county lines. And then when it comes to the uh, legislative districts, is there any particular rule? Because that's much more difficult to divide. Yes, the code, the go, the code does point to how the lines should be drawn um, and the standards that need to be followed uh, by the legislative ag service agency, who is the one that actually, actually comes up with the map. Um, and and the proposed bill on the districts, this redistricting. Tell me what the impact will be of the census numbers coming in so late. It's really putting a crunch on a lot of states. Yes, um, we're seeing a huge impact because of the census numbers not being reported yet. Um, typically, we would have seen the numbers come in February or March. And as we sit here today, we still don't have the numbers. The Census Bureau has released a statement that in the interim, data product, also known as a legacy summary file, should be released by August 16th of this year. Um, and then we're hoping to have the final, um, the actual restrict, redistricting data from the census by September 30th um, of this year. Now, the issue that poses for Iowa is that the Iowa Constitution sets a deadline of September 15th by which the redistricting law must be signed, must be signed and enacted. En enacted. Um, and unfortunately, it's unclear if we're going to be able to meet that deadline this year. So what do you think is going to happen? Are you going to be, I mean, I know there's crystal balls involved here, but I mean, are you, it almost sounds like it's a foregone conclusion that's going to have to be a request of some kind of an extension in Iowa. So in Iowa, the Constitution actually sets forth what happens if we don't meet the deadline. So if the law, or essentially if the redistricting is not uh, enacted into law by September 15th, the Supreme Court of Iowa has to take over. Um, earlier this year, on April 8th, the Supreme Court of Iowa did come out with a statement, um, certainly not a ruling because such they can't do so because it's not yet an issue before the court, um, but a little bit of a tentative guidance um, that if such did come to the Supreme Court, it would likely still try to follow the process set forth in the Iowa Code, um, but simply uh, expanding the, t uh, the timeline. As you know, in Illinois 10 years ago, there was a lawsuit that was uh, uh, victorious, as a matter of fact, because they didn't think the Illinois lines represented some districts and some uh, uh, racial populations very well, particularly uh, Hispanics in the Chicago area. So, so when you draw the lines in Iowa, is that not a consideration of any type? It's, it's basically counting the numbers of people? That's how it should be. I mean, the consideration is that they can't be done in such a way to dilute the voting strength of a minority group. Um, and, the, and the lines are drawn by the legislative uh, service agency. Um, and they put forth the, the proposed maps, um, essentially in the first plan. Well, as you know, the calendar is getting tighter and tighter for you right now, and you're still waiting for one more board members. But do you have an idea of when the hearings might be held in our area and where they might be held? I do not have an idea yet. I know that we will be meeting uh, in the near future to just have the discussion of appointing our chair so that then we can move forward. But yes, the timeline is getting very, very small for us. So we have a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. Our thanks to Jasmine Newton of Iowa's Temporary Redistricting Advisory Commission. And our discussion continues online and on your mobile device. Just type the search words this week on our website or use our mobile app. We've posted more information and important links for today's topic. Plus, you can listen to our entire interview with Jasmine Newton on our podcast. Just click on This Week at WQAD.com. And still ahead on This Week, celebrating one of our most favorite desserts. Today is actually National Ice Cream Day. And if you live in the Quad Cities, you certainly know about Whitey's ice cream. But do you really know about Whitey's? We'll test you just ahead on News 8 this week.